Good evening and welcome into Gimnasio Luis Ramos in Puerto La Cruz, Venezuela for tonight's BCL Americas game between Halcones de Salapa of Mexico and Gladiadores de Anzoategui of Venezuela. Alongside Paul Mokeski, I'm Craig Feta and we're so glad you can be with us wherever you're tuned in from, around the Americas or around the world. Second of two games tonight as we go back to Group A and Paul, the roster changes made by Paco Omos for Halcones seem to have been effective. He swapped eight players, and after losing by Real Esteli by 10 points in December, they turned around and walloped Esteli by 25 last night. Yeah, I'll tell you what, they've made uh, big adjustments in their roster and a great job of adding the right pieces and a great job by the coach to put them together. And uh, a couple players uh, that are interesting, uh, Machia Abacus, uh, the big seven footer who's an old school hook shot play below the rim guy very effective uh, with 16 points and 12 rebounds and then the re the guy i really like craig is alexis elsener uh, he he reminds me of ginobili he's about six seven left-handed plays with energy get to the basket has that euro step move uh can knock down a three and uh he's a really really good player 
Gladiadores, meanwhile, has had a day off since their win over Real Esteli on Saturday when they played their first game without Garley Soho, who passed away last month. No doubt they're still adjusting to his loss, but they found a way on Saturday playing with heavy hearts. Four players scored in double figures on Saturday, and I don't think it's any coincidence that they were four veterans. Gregory Vargas, 18 points, 38 years old in February. Nestor Cominares, 13 points, 36 years old. Anthony Perez, 30 years old with 11 points. And Charles Garcia with 10 points. Yeah, and they're, they, you know, they've played together for a long time. They have a lot of good pieces, a lot of talent, and uh, they're at home here. It's going to be loud in this arena. Uh, another point about the players that Jalapas, uh, Halconas uh, added, they're all over 32 years old also. <laughs> so veterans yeah. obviously are important. I, I definitely noticed that <laughs> when I was updating my rosters. And I saw a veteran, 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 30 plus, 30 plus, 30 plus. That's one way to turn your team around. It's kind of like when you're building a college program. You, uh, you know, you come in as a new coach and you don't necessarily have a lot on the recruiting trail already. So you, you bring in a lot of uh, JUCO transfers. Yeah, or uh, transfer portal guys that have been playing at other colleges that uh, just want to change the scenery. But you very rarely do you go find a high school player to help turn your program around. And uh, same here, very rarely do you go find a 22, 23-year-old guy that's skilled. You go find the 32, 33, 35-year-old guys that have been around, know how to play, and can take the physicality of this uh uh, league and also the refereeing and uh, kind of the controversy sometimes you go through with the crowd. Got to look just a moment ago at the starters for Daniel Seoane. Henry Walker, Gregory Vargas, Anthony Perez, and Nestor Cominares, and NBA veteran Jordan Crawford at 35 years old playing for Gladiadores. Starting five for Halcones. Daniel Bejarano, David Cubigan. Mexican national team member Gabriel Giron. And Rasid Mahobasic. So even some changes from Saturday in the starting lineup for Paco Olmos. Teodoro Fernandez will be coming off the bench in this one. Ball's in the air and we are underway. Our officials for this game, Andres Bartel of Uruguay, Carlos Velez of Colombia, and Fernando Laite of Brazil. inside from Crawford. Pominares could not score. First shot of the game short, but therefore the putback. And you'll Daniel see Halcones Bejarano. goes to the post early. Yeah, Halcones goes to the post early and works out of the post, especially early in the game. First bucket of the game for Gladiadores, Anthony Perez. Perez had 11 points against Esteli on Saturday. Well, I'm not sure what the defender was doing there <laughs> as Masa Malbasa scored. To... I'm trying to pull the chair, but uh, you know, you've seen twice in a row Halconas has come down and posted up the big fella, and that's been effective. There's Colmenares asking for a foul. Already, early in the game. He usually does that. <laughs> Another one of those Venezuelan national team members. A guy who's been around a long, long time. First three-pointer of the game is up and good. Gabriel Giron, he had 14 points against Esteli last night. 
And he can really knock down the three, and he's also strong to the basket. Henry Walker misses his first three-point attempt. They'll also post up Gabriel Caron sometimes if he's got a little guard on him. Seven to four in favor of Halcones. Rebound put back up and in by Gabriel Giron. He's just a strong player, man. <laughs> Six yeah, now as Perez has four of the six points for Gladiadores. A nice uh, little post-up move. Uh, but I see early off Gladiadores is uh, looking at the ref for calls. You're not going to get them against the veteran Halconis team. And Halconis executes. They're not going to back down. So you just need to play and forget about the referee. Three on the way. That is good. Wow. Tough shot by Jordan Blinn. Uh, Gladiadores with a three. That rolls off. Rebound Nestor Comenares. He gets it back out to his national team teammate Gregory Vargas. He attacks with the left hand and lays it in. Wow. <laughs> this is like the last game between Franca and Nudek. Yeah. As well, David was wild. Trubigan. What was wild about that, Craig, is he shot the three. Luckily, he made it because there was a wide lane for him just to lay it in with no defense there. David Cubillon, another Venezuelan national team member, playing for Alcones de Salapa of Mexico. No doubt he was able to provide some advanced scouting on the tendencies of Gregory Vargas and Mr. Comenaros in particular. Helps out. Helps out with the KYP, know your personnel. <laughs> I always try to teach on these games, Greg. <laughs> Taught us a lot of acronyms, that's for sure. Shot it's by Maho Bosco. Will not count. And it's amazing the number of national team members from all over South and Central America that we've seen playing in these games. I mean, this is this is high level basketball. Absolutely. You know, Pass from Henry countries. Walker. The best players play for their national teams, for sure. Here's Jordan Crawford launching the long three. A little too long for him. But there's Anthony Perez with a three of his own. And Gladiadores to within two at 15-13. Five twenty to play first quarter. Pass to Maho Basic in the lane. Couldn't really do anything with it. Now turns and shoots the hook. No good. Rebounded by Perez. And after one game, hello. I can tell you, I can tell you he can only turn to his left shoulder. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> KYP. The exact short floater from Jordan Crawford is good. A big hello to all of our viewers in the USA on FanDuel TV, to our viewers in South America on DirecTV, and around the rest of the world 
on the BCL Americas YouTube channel. Henry Walker, after faking the three, takes it himself, draws the foul. We are tied up at 15. <laughs> it's, it's interesting to me that player swings down, hits the guy's arm, and then looks at the ref with his hands out like, what did I do? <laughs> <laughs> you, and sir, got uh, caught with your hand in the cookie jar. <laughs> and that's unfortunate, too, because, uh, you know, he's their big center that they use, and he got kind of a, a push in the back on one end, and then that silly foul, and now he's got to sit down probably at least for the rest of this quarter and a lot of the second quarter. Tyler Fernandez foul. into the game. Tyler Fernandez into the game now for Halconis. Along with Devon Jefferson. Jefferson had eight points and five rebounds in his first game with Halconis against Real Esteli. All Pac-10 honorable mention with USC. Another guy who's been all over the world, very decorated. Player of the year in Korea in 2014. Russian League MVP in 2012. That three is up and good. And Gladiadores now on top. 18-15. He's letting them know, you can't leave me open out here. I'll knock it down. Step back three missing by Fabian James. Offensive rebound, though, for Halconis. And another three is up and good. This one for Jordan Glenn. Yeah, Jordan Glenn can knock those down from out there. You got to get out and make him drive. Two of two from the arc for six points for Glenn. Now here's Vargas into the paint. Quick shot with the right hand and good. And that's, I love to see that, a guard that has a mismatch in the paint. He goes and takes his man down the mismatch and goes to work in the post with a little flip shot, hook shot. Nice shot. Love it. So Vargas to the free throw line. 83-57. percent free throw shooter for the tournament. And again, the fans, <laughs> they see they get swiped off the rim and they want the goal to end. They don't play anything other than FIBA rules here, so I'm not sure why they're so yeah, outraged. We saw, that, we saw that in the first game between Franca and Udek. The Udek fans just about lost their minds. Yeah, and it's a FIBA rule. They should know it. They fall. Now in the States, yeah. that would be outrage for sure. For but. sure. Crawford's three-pointer misses. Gladiadores. Lead remains at two at 20 to 18. Yeah, it's funny. Every time you watch Team USA in the Olympics or something like that, the, the, the first game... And really, the first time that happens in every game against Team USA, all the American fans just apoplectic. That's a goaltend. <laughs> and I've said it before. It really, even in these games, it doesn't come into play but two or three times at the most. But I like it in the game. I think the NBA should adapt it. Uh, defensively, you can knock it off the rim. That's hard to do most for the most part. But it allows yeah, it really people is. to fly through. The, the excitement is on the offensive end when they can slam it down off the rim. Free throw missed by Glenn. Well, 
Looks like to me they're going to go in a zone. That's what that signal usually means. That's a universal basketball signal right there. I was glancing down at my uh, stat page here. What was the uh, what was the signal? Uh, double hands, fists up over there. The coaches will probably tell him full court, little zone pressure. One hand up means half court zone usually in basketball. One fist up, rather. I thought two hands up was touchdown. <laughs> a wrong sport there, Kurt. <laughs> you might have a jet. You might have a little jet lagging. Yeah, had that quick flight from uh, Concepcion, Chile, to Puerto La Cruz, Venezuela, between games here. As Devon Jefferson loses it out of bounds. Yeah, 203 to play football. first quarter. Stolen away, and the pressure worked. Yep, it sure did. And they're gonna put it on him again, I guarantee you. Keep doing it till they can stop it. So Halconis with the lead back. A minute and a half to play first quarter. Shot clock now at seven. They found Araujo underneath. Initial shot blocked, but got his own put back. There's my guy. Alexis taking it to the basket. Alex, Alexis Mini Ginobili. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see, Craig. You'll see. He certainly filled up the stat sheet for Halcones yesterday against Real Esteli. 20 points, 4 rebounds, 4 assists, 4 steals for the 35-year-old Argentine. Just got to look at one of my favorite coaches in this tournament, Daniel Seone. First free throw is good. Second one is good. Alexis Elsener. Oh, I jinxed him. You did. You can't say it's good. I know. I don't it's bad I enough when you. <laughs> it's bad enough when we say he's you know eight for eight or ten for ten, but to say a free throw <laughs> is good. That's my guy too. I love the way he plays. <laughs> So we stay tied at 22. Just about 56 seconds to play in this first quarter. Here's Vargas. His high shot off the glass won't go, but an offensive rebound. Nelson Palacios into the game now for Gladiadores, and now Jonathan Araujo draws the foul, so he'll go to the line for an old-fashioned three-point play attempt. Yeah, and he shuffled those puppies, but didn't get called for it. <laughs> foul was on Daniel Bejarano, and Bejarano was caught looking around. Both these teams will execute their offense, move the ball. They both do a good job. And, and both of these teams have so many veterans. That's probably why, as Fabian James scores there. And that really uh, threw me off. Well, it didn't throw me off, but impressed me with Halconis is because they have seven new players, but they all yeah. seem to see the offense and run the sets and – uh, do a great job, and like you said, it's because they're veterans. Vargas dribbled that off his foot. I thought that went off of the foot of Vargas, but evidently they're going to say that went off of Halcones last. 
Araujo to get the inbound pass. Vargas gets it back. Now he drives, takes it all the way himself, and lays it in with the left hand. And the first quarter comes to an end with Gladiadores on top by the score of 27-24. Entertaining first frame of play between these two clubs. As we look at the shooting numbers. Gladiadores, 12 of 20 for 60% from the floor, 2 of 7 from three-point range, 1 of 4 from the free throw line. Halconis, 9 of 18 overall, 4 of 6 from the free throw, or rather from the three-point arc, and 2 of 4 from the free throw line. Rebounding battle tied at 10. Just one turnover for Gladiadores in that first quarter, just one for Halcones as well. Just six fouls whistled in that first quarter as well, so a very nice, entertaining, clean game thus far. As we get a look at a shot there by Anthony Perez. Araujo has five for Gladiadores, Charles Garcia three. Gregory Vargas eight on four of five shooting. He's also got three assists. Cobinares with two, Jordan Crawford with two, Anthony Perez with seven. For Halcones, Daniel Bejarano with two. Your guy Alexis Elsiner with one. Tyler Fernandez with two. <laughs> Jordan Glynn with nine on three of three shooting. Played all ten minutes, as did Bejarano, or Bejarano in that first quarter. David Cubillon with three. Gabriel Giron with five, and Rasid Mahobasic with two. Yeah, Craig, both of these teams are evenly matched. They have uh, talent, strength, athleticism at every position. They're all loaded with veteran players that know how to play. They're both well coached, and uh, I look for a really competitive game all the way down to the final seconds here tonight. Interesting to see Jordan Crawford with Gladiadores. After a number of years in the NBA and G League, played in China, Israel, Turkey. Russia, Germany. Korea, usually when a guy, yeah, usually when a guy plays overseas, he tends to stick to one continent because all the teams see him and he kind of just moves around from team to team on that same continent. But then in 2022, he ended up with Gigantes de Carolina in Puerto Rico. And he went to Bahrain, then back to China before coming to Venezuela. <laughs> He's had quite the journey. There's my guy, Ginobili. There he is. <laughs> Spin move. Alexis Elsinor. Love his game. Yeah, usually veterans, you know, they stay in one area uh, because, like you said, people see him, they get used to him. But if you're talented like that, you're in demand uh, everywhere, and you kind of follow the situation and or the money. If it were me, I'd follow the weather. <laughs> I, I agree with you sitting here in Las Vegas because <laughs> I, I played in Milwaukee, I played in Cleveland, I played in Detroit. I don't really want to see cold weather and snow again. I'll, yeah, I was going to say no, no warm weather. No bad weather in those three cities. <laughs> and then I coached up in Canada. Yeah. <laughs> Does the phrase lake effect snow ring a bell for you? Absolutely. No, thank you. <laughs> oh, wow. Little flip finish there by Febion James. And Halconis back on top again, 28-27. A 
Little 4 0 run to start this second quarter for Halcones. I'll pass up top to Cubion. Now Great Perez for move. three. And I think Cubion would have pulled the trigger on that, but the pass was a little low. So he couldn't gather himself in time on a catch and shoot. Drive by Charles Garcia. Could not finish there. Garcia, another American veteran as Devon Jefferson scores. That's his first two points on this game. And I believe Gladiadores called timeout. Yeah, Devon Jefferson just took it to the basket and it looked like a fullback running through there and finished at the rim. Garcia is another one of those guys. Another veteran American from Los Angeles. His parents actually from Belize. Graduated from Seattle in 2010. Played in Turkey, the D League, Spain, Puerto Rico, Bahrain, Iceland, Japan, Philippines, China, Taiwan, and was the Taiwan Super League Finals MVP in 2019. Yeah, Halconas has been a great team in Mexico for years and years. They have money, and they do their work, and they've really brought in some talented players here, uh, all, all to the uh, general manager, the coach for putting it together, but also the ownership that's willing to spend money to get these players here. Again, a big welcome in to our viewers in the USA on FanDuel TV. South America on Direct TV and around the rest of the world on the BCL America's YouTube channel. There you get a look at the drum line here in Gimnasio Luis go. Ramos in Puerto La Cruz, Venezuela. I think that's similar to the shirt you wore on the plane today. Yeah. Yeah, not too far off. <laughs> might of course might of course lit up, but <laughs> you, of course, decked out in a suit and tie as always. Always class. Classy. Yep, no doubt. Old school. Speaking of old school, Nestor Cominares works his way to the bucket and lays that one in. Nice back to the basket, dribble, dribble, drop step. So that ends the 6-0 run to start off this second quarter for Halcones. Long three-pointer missed. So now Vargas giving it up to Venezuelan national teammate Esther Colmenares. Spins and slips and still finds his way to the bucket. Wow, tough left-handed finish there. Great pass, inside out, pass to back into the post for a good finish. Great ball move for both these teams. So after a momentary lead again for Gladiadores, Alcones back on top. Great pass to Charles Garcia. Struggled to get a shot up, finally did, and then missed, and then at the other end, hit the rim on the way up. Here's Garcia. A leap into the lane, wanted a call with contact, and now stolen <laughs> away by Romero. Three on the way, no. Rebound. This, this, is, this is turned into a bad pickup game. <laughs> yeah, it really is. And the fans here in Puerto La Cruz. Really letting the officials hear it. I don't know what they're upset about. Yeah. 
I mean, it, it. he definitely sold it, but, I mean, there was definitely a foul there. I don't think it was worth throwing your hands up and then throwing yourself onto the floor. Are you saying that FIBA basketball players over-exaggerate sometimes? <laughs> You know, it comes it comes from the the soccer world, the European soccer players. You know, you touch them and they they act like they've been hit with a bazooka, and that unfortunately has translated to basketball. It you really don't quite has. see it as much in American basketball. I mean, guys will definitely sell calls, but you know, they don't throw their head back and their arms up and. Some do, some don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Halconis back on top by three. A three pointer on the way from Crawford, no good. Vargas steals that one away. And now a foul. That's going to be on Devon Jefferson. We've had the first quarter, Craig, where there were hardly any turnovers, and now turnovers galore happening out there. Yeah, I can't remember how many there were after the first quarter, but was I it like one and one? one? Yeah, I think it was one and one. By the official stats, it's only two and two right now. That doesn't seem right. <laughs> no, it doesn't. We just saw four to five in a row. Or not in a row, but rather quickly. And now that you have your split screen with both stats on there, you can look at yeah. it. Yeah. I saw <laughs> I am that. looking at it right now. <laughs> I don't yeah, know I what they're the, discussing. Uh, got the vertical mount for the monitor. Flip the monitor up and down so you can see the stat page all at once without having to scroll anything. Got the roster on another monitor, the game on a third monitor. Are they trying to see if this is a an unsportsmanlike? Or a take foul? That's what they call it in the NBA. I don't know if they have a FIBA, but he definitely grabbed his arm, but he looked he was going for the ball. Yeah, he sure was. And he almost got it too. Just a common foul. Someone made the sign of a TV screen, so they got to go over there and look it up. <laughs> <laughs> there you get a look at Daniel Sione. I'm sure we'll get a chance to get the camera and microphone into the Gladiadores huddle at some point tonight. And he really is just a joy to watch coach. There's so many good coaches in this uh, tournament. Yeah. Colmenares bumped and a foul before the shot. Are they going to count the shot? Yes. <laughs> With emphasis wow. by the official. And the foul is going to be on Devon Jefferson. Looks like he's playing in the game. There's the foul. The foul was definitely before he took the shot. That's, that's what I was thinking. Or no, he was pointing out. Oh, you know what? Oh, you he go. was. Yeah. The emphasis was that it was on the floor and not the shot. Okay. okay. So he was pointing at sense. the floor. I thought. <laughs> I thought he was looks, pointing to count the bucket. Yeah, it looked like you know the old school NBA referees that emphasized everything. Like yeah. By the way, 84 degrees in Puerto La Cruz. Anzawatagi in Venezuela. Don't forget, it's summer down there. 70% humidity. Ooh. 84 degrees and 70% humidity at 8 o'clock at night. Yeah, that's... I think uh, that's what you uh, call uh, sticky. Or miserable, <laughs> one or the other. Vargas 
trying to shake Fabian James. Launches the three, and that's good! With the shot clock winding down, Gregory Vargas ties it, and he's got 11. He's capable of doing that, creating his own shot, but in my opinion, he over-dribbled and uh, he made the shot, but still a little over-dribbling there, but he's capable of doing that. Shot clock at three now, two high off the glass, no rebound. Back tap taken by Crawford. Crawford pulls up from 15, no. Crawford showing frust uh, some frustration after that miss. He was frustrated after his last miss as well. Yeah, they're wide open shots. On. He, he makes those, so. Foul on Nestor Comenares. Running over Gabriel Giron. Now that was legitimately <laughs> getting put on the floor. Yeah, he was not disguising that. He said, you set a pick on me, I'm going to run through you. <laughs> One game already in the books tonight. Franca defeated Udek 109-87. The Franca Express just continues to roll. Very impressive team there, Franca. Well, eight strong. Three-pointer up and good from the wing for Jordan Crawford. And he breathes a sigh of relief. He's got five now. And the crowd went crazy on that shot. Yeah, they really did. He was one of, he was 0 for 4 from the arc beyond, or prior to that shot. Shot clock at four now. Bejarano gives it up. And that's not going to count. There's a little bit of over dribbling too there, right? That's one thing six we don't to play. Franca do. Over dribble, no. they pass. David Cubion knocks down the shot, but just a fraction of a second too late. Three minutes to play second quarter. Gladiadores on top, 37-34. Spinning into the lane and the hook shot is up and good to the delight of the fans here Nestor Cominares and they call a foul after that I think great move though spin move finish with your right hand did not see who they call that foul on It looked like after the shot, someone pushed somebody. And someone went flying. Yeah, that was on Henry Walker. I thought I saw him hold up number five, but I couldn't quite tell. He fouled Rasid Mahobasic. No games tomorrow in BCL America's play. Next game will be Friday, the 26th, between Nacional of Chile and Kimsa of Argentina. 7.10 local time, 7.10 Eastern time in the U.S. as well. Just doing a great job of communicating in the huddle and telling them exactly what they want. And you can tell, Craig, uh, the attention uh, of your players. When I usually in the huddle, as a coach, I would look and try to look in their eyes, make sure everybody's looking in my eyes so they're paying attention. In the Halconis huddle, you could really see that they respect that coach and are listening to him. And we've seen a couple of teams in a couple of games this tournament where the players did not seem terribly engaged during the timeouts and as a result those teams were usually the ones on the short end of things 
Yeah, that's a sign of a bad team for sure. Aside from having the best, most, most athletic players, what one trait would you say the best teams all share? Uh, I would say, it's hard to say one trait. I would say a couple, competitive and unselfish. So they're going to give up, like I've talked before about giving up a good shot for a great shot because you're unselfish. And uh, that's what the trait so besides athleticism and skill and all that, those are the traits you look for. Someone that com will compete for you, playing hard, and someone that's unselfish and willing to do whatever it takes to win, even if it's not taking the shot. Maybe it's making the pass or playing defense or rotating. But uh, those are the two traits I look for. And also it helps if you can make shots. <laughs> Well, there's that, too. Yeah. And I've told you before, I don't need shooters. I need makers. <laughs> yep. Gabriel Giron hits the first free throw. Misses the second. Gladiadores has their little 5-0 run ended with that free throw. 2.20 to play second quarter. Comenares on the give to, is that Crawford? And a foul called. Foul was on David Cubijan. Yeah, a little too much of a reach there. Crawford finally gets it in bounds and gets it back. Long three pointer on the way. No. That was NBA distance plus. Plus plus. <laughs> plus plus. Cubion. Algiron on the drive has the layup rattle out. Mahobasic the rebound. Scoop won't go, but a whistle. And Henry Walker <laughs> walking away with his arms up. Let's see if he's got a case. Well, he left his feet, kicked his leg out. <laughs> he did go yeah, vertical, I'll give him that. Well, his left arm was out sideways, but uh, we talked about this last game. The aggressive teams that drive hard to the basket are the ones that get the calls for the most part. And uh, on that play, two players from Halconis drove hard to the basket. And, uh, you know, you get the advantage of the whistle sometimes when you do that. Cubion hits the first free throw. And it's completely crossing me up having David Cubion on Halconis. I'm used to seeing him with Nestor Colmenares and Gregory Vargas and Nelson Palacios on the Venezuelan national team. That's Boy, that team was so much fun player. to watch. Oh, yeah. That was such a fun team to watch, coached by Nestor Garcia when he was the head coach of Venezuela. You knew you were in for an absolute 40-minute fight. What college coach was it that always wanted 40 minutes of hell? Uh, Arkansas. Uh, I can't remember his name. 40, 40 minutes of hell. And uh, yep. I, I actually actually was scouting for Miami Heat back then, and I watched them play. And, and I was sitting there going, they play so aggressive, so hard, and they foul so much that at some point the referees get tired of calling fouls and they just let them get physical. <laughs> 41-37 now for Gladiadores. 
That three-pointer straight through. Jordan Glenn hits from way outside. Biggest lead of the game for either team has been seven. For Halcones, Gladiadores led by as many as five. Now we're within one. Three-pointer missed by Araujo. Gets the rebound, though. Inside of a minute to play in this second quarter. Into the corner. Long jumper, no, won't go. Rebound tapped back, controlled by Halcones. 40 seconds to play. Got a chance for a two-for-one here. Cubillon misses the three-pointer, tapped out of bounds. It'll be Gladiadores' ball. Well, they accomplished the two-for-one, but they didn't get the bucket. And I'm a coach, uh, Craig, so I have to give credit to Nolan Richardson. That was the coach of Arkansas. There you go. 1985. How we forget Nolan Richardson? 389 wins and 169 losses. That's almost a 70% winning percentage. So, yeah, he's the one that really put defensive pressure on everybody full court all game. And uh, uh, tough to uh, play against, for sure. Didn't he also coach for Tulsa? Am I misremembering I that? I believe so. Yes, he uh, actually coached for Tulsa uh, before. Yeah, I can't say that because uh, I played in Milwaukee with uh, a great player, one of the per first point forwards, uh, Paul Pressey. And Paul Pressey played for Nolan. Oh, Rangers. yeah. Wow, that's a, that's a name I haven't heard in forever. Yeah, he coached for, uh, coached for Tulsa from 1980 to 1985. Some of those unbelievable Missouri Valley teams that were playing back in the early and mid-80s. Good friend of mine was an official in the... Ooh, that, that's a hard job right there. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was an official in the, the primarily the Big 8 and Missouri Valley. And he used to tell stories about Nolan Richardson. Big hello to and Ed Schumer, if you're watching us, Ed. Flashback there. The Big 8, that's what I played at Kansas when it was the Big 8. Kansas Jayhawks. Kansas has a basketball team? Oh, yes, sir. We just, <laughs> last, year we had, last year we had our 125-year anniversary of basketball. That's amazing. It just happens to be where Naismith was, the inventor of the game. Yep. And then, of course, the Canadians will tell you that Dr. Naismith was Canadian. <laughs> Never fail to mention that. Oh, pretty finish there. To give Halcones the lead at 42-41. Clock winding down. And it will not count had it have gone. <laughs> so an entertaining, tight first half. Back and forth battle between... Halcones and Gladiadores. Halcones finishes the half on top by one, 42-41 as we look at the numbers on this one. Gladiadores, 17 of 34 for 50% overall from the floor, 4 of 14 from three-point range, 28.6%. Better by about 12% than they've been shooting in this tournament, just 16.7% against Real Esteli on Saturday. Three of six from the free throw line for Gladiadores. Halcones, 16 of 32, also exactly 50% from the floor overall. Five of 11 for 45.5% from three point range. Five of eight from the free throw line. Just 14 free throws shot in that first half. Rebounding battle. Halcones. Leads by one, 19-18. Four turnovers for Gladiadores in that first half. Three by Halcones. Let's roll the highlights from the first half. For Gladiadores, Nestor Colmenares, eight points. Jordan Crawford, five. Charles Garcia, three. Gregory Vargas, 11. Jonathan Araujo with five. Anthony Perez, seven. And Johanner Sifontes with two. For Halcones, 
Daniel Bejarano with two. David Cubigan with seven. Your guy Alexis Elsener with three. Jordan Glenn with 12 points, four rebounds. Rasid Mahal Basic with two points. Tadar Fernandez, four points. Gabriel Giron has eight. And Devon Jefferson with four. And Paul Bokeski, what do either one of these two teams have to do in the second half to try to pull away from the other one, or is it going to be tight? Uh, to the wire. I told you, yeah, I told you before that they're evenly matched in every position. They all have veterans. They're all well coached, and you know this is going to be one of those back and forth battles. And you know, uh, some team that's going to maybe put some stops together and make a little run. But as we always say runs and momentum will win games and maybe it's the team with the run at the right time at the end of this game is going to come out the victor but I'll tell you one thing either, neither of these teams will back down or fold under pressure you are absolutely right we are back with second half action live from Gimnasio Luis Ramos Puerto La Cruz and Zuategui, Venezuela. 42-41 at half, Falcones leads. We're back in a moment.
Welcome back to Gimnasio Luis Ramos in Puerto La Cruz, Venezuela for BCL America's action. Second game of the night, this one between Alcones de Salapa of Mexico and Gladiadores de Anzuategui playing on their home floor here in Venezuela. What a great crowd. Wow. Nice. Yeah. That voice you just heard is my partner, Paul Mokeski. My name is Craig Fada. So glad you can be with us. Wherever you're tuned in from around the Americas or around the world, and there we got a great shot of that GS7 patch that Gladiadores is wearing in honor of their teammate, Darley Soho, who tragically passed away between the December and January windows. Big welcome into our viewers in the USA on FanDuel TV. In South America on DirecTV and around the rest of this great big wide world of ours on the BCL America's YouTube channel. We are underway here in the second half. Then a back and forth game. The whole way, biggest lead of the game for Halcones was seven. Biggest lead of the game for Gladiadores was five. Shot clock winding down, catch and shoot. That was a touch pass three-point attempt. Yeah, they, they executed a play okay, but they couldn't get an advantage. Yeah. And really solid defense by Halcones on that play and uh, had to throw up something late, try to get it on the rim. Unfortunately, they were too late for it. And now, Vargas comes over and has words with his Venezuelan national team teammate, David Cubigan. And Vargas is the uh, energy guy, and he stirs things up and... Uh, He's a leader on this team, so uh, I guess he wants to stir things up a little early in this half. Oh, beautiful pass from Rasid Mahobasic. And that's the, uh, that's uh, Halconis going into the post early, and then they cut off that great backdoor pass. Paul, we talked in the first half, or you talked after the end of the first half about whichever team is able to sustain a run as close to the end of the game as possible could be the winner on this one. The biggest run of the game was only 10 points by Gladiadores. The biggest run of the game by Halconis was seven. Eight lead changes so far. Only about a minute and a half difference in Real time spent here. leading. Yeah. yeah just a silly, silly foul. He just made a great play at the other end, passed out of the post, and he's got two. Now he's got three, and uh, uh, just a silly foul. But uh, it's very clear right now, Craig, that Halconis is going to pick up the defensive pressure and see if they can shake things up here early in the third quarter. Pass outside to Crawford for three. That's no good, and here comes Alconis back the other way. They don't have numbers, so they stop and get the offense reset. That three is up, and good! Gabriel Giron hits the tray, and Alconis now leading by six. And the defensive pressure continues for Alconis. Ooh, Maho Bastic with a risky reach in there. Yeah, it was. But the pressure forces a turnover. Now Halcones looking for their biggest lead of the game. Three on the way from Glenn. That Time is out. good! Time out, please. <laughs> I knew saw that coming. It almost came last time, but the coach wanted to give it another chance. But, man, that's a nice shot from the three there. And, uh... Uh, forcing, forcing the timeout from uh, Gladiadores for sure. A nine-point lead now for Halconis. Jordan Glenn now with 15 points. 
He is four of four. Three point land, five of five overall. And just like that, we'll run here to start off this third quarter for Halcones, a little 6 0 run to give them a nine point lead. It's going to be interesting to see how the Gladiadores team responds here. Who are they going to go to? They need a bucket right here to stem the tide, uh, execute a play, and uh, uh, they have a number of different options with uh, uh, Walker and Crawford and Vargas, so we'll see where they go here when they need a basket. There was a look at that great pass from Rasid Mahobasic to cutting Daniel Bejarano, which led to the dunk. Play has spurred on Halconis to this nine point spread. Boy, and if you're Halconis here, you almost want a pressure coming out of that timeout. Yeah, because it's worked so far. Yeah, and you disrupt, you no doubt they, you know, had a set piece drawn up, and no doubt. You could have disrupted that. Either way. Or throw, or throw a zone at him. Yeah. yeah. Either way, it's a turnover, and now Halconis with a chance to extend this biggest lead of the game. That three is up, and that missed. Rebounded by Garcia. So Garcia starting the second half on the floor for Gladiadores in place of William Walker, who was largely ineffective in that first half, played nine minutes and 50 seconds, did not score, took only one shot, and only had one rebound. Also racked up three fouls, so no doubt we'll see more of Charles Garcia here early in this third quarter. Great finish there with the foul called as Anthony Perez completes the three-point play to stop the bleeding a little bit and now Glenn tied up uh -oh. with I didn't see uh -oh. who that was that was Charles Garcia yeah they're, gonna yeah, they're not gonna let this go on there. yeah yeah too good we've of a seen, team yeah we've already seen Cubion Get tied up with Vargas and now Garcia and Glenn. Interesting to see two Americans get tied up like that. No one was backing down. They're like, I'm not letting go. You no. let go. <laughs> kind of a macho thing going on. And the shot. Partially blocked by Charles Garcia. I don't know how that went in. Daniel yeah, Bejarano yeah. will go to the line to try to complete the three-point play. He grabbed his arm on this one and hit him in the face, too. Yeah. <laughs> and he still made it, yeah. Greg, I could, I, I could not be a ref uh, because I, would, I wouldn't take any gruff, and uh, people keep arguing and whining at me. I would just tee him up. <laughs> technical foul, technical foul, technical foul. You're gone. <laughs> I would not be a good ref. <laughs> Paul's handing out technical fouls like party favors. Absolutely. Hey, if you want to like uh, complain about call, if you want to complain about calls, grab a whistle and become a referee or else just play. <laughs> Pass over the head of Garcia, stolen away by Giron. Giron draws the foul at the other end, and he's going to go to the line. Just so smart. He has a, a layup, but he slows down and creates the contact and finishes. Smart play. Watch him slow down here. Wait for the defense to kind of run him in the back. He's going to slow down, 
And now up, uh, I get an N1. And that foul on Garcia as well. One thing that the Gladiator, that the Gladiator Doors team is going to find out is that uh, Alconis is not the same team they faced a month ago. They're older, stronger, yeah. more veteran, and they're not going to get shook here. Biggest lead of the game now for Helconis at 55-44. Jordan Crawford from inside the left elbow, and that's good. At some point, the veterans on the floor, and Gladiadora certainly has a lot of them. You know they've got to they've got to kind of call themselves together here and say, okay, guys, you know the coach can only do so much at that point, but the players have to gather themselves. Yeah, and they're picking up the defensive no. pressure here right now. And now Crawford fouled. That's going to be on your own. Claudia Doris is doing uh, what uh, Halconis did to them early in this quarter. They're picking up the defensive pressure. Six minutes to play in this third quarter. There's the shot blocked. And then the foul by Giron. Vargas, no look. Backhand pass to Colmenares. He wasn't there. Jordan Glenn tried to hit the transition three. Fortunately, Malabasic oh. got the rebound. That was a heck of a behind the back pass, too. Rebounded by Perez. Fans starting to get into it, and he true. Oh, there was a foul. I thought he traveled. Maybe he traveled because he knew there was a foul. I keep seeing that bandage on the ear of Anthony Perez, and from a distance, I think he's got an earbud in. Uh, that's what it looked like. I thought that, too. <laughs> Maybe listen to some nice mellow music, some nice mellow town tones. Maybe he's listening to Paul Mokeski. Coming right at you uh. with the smooth, mellow jazz. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now. now. Now you're stepping into my realm. <laughs> Stay in your lane as a color analyst there, big fella. Little voiceover going on. <laughs> in a world where two veteran teams battle it out, <laughs> the victor will be the one with the longest run at the end of the game. I think you should tell Sorry. your agent to start looking for voiceover work. <laughs> Fifty-five forty-seven after one free throw. Oh, your own. Oh, he tried to get the pass to the wide open Rasid Mahalbasic yeah. underneath, but it went off the leg of the defender. I think that was Crawford that made the kick save. Yeah, it was a kick save. Yeah, and it, I was going to say, Craig, this is an important part of the game for both teams. You know, Halconis has to keep their lead, keep their composure, keep doing what they do. And uh, Gladiadoris can make a run here and even up going into the fourth quarter. Nearly half of this third quarter elapsed. Oh, and the beautiful hesitation and take by Alexis Elsener, your guy. That's my guy. Kind of slow played the defense. And he said, the, the all right, Ginobili I'll take it Gave him the Ginobili Hezzy on that one. Finish there for Anthony Perez. Perez now in double figures with 10. It's three players in doubles for Gladiadores. Comaneras and Vargas each with 11. Back outside to Glenn. Shot clock at 10. Oh. Stolen away by Comaneras. Just a bad pass. And the finish at the other end, 
by Johannes Sifontes, and the lead is down to six, 57-51. And the fans here in Gimnasio Luis Ramos cheering the home team, and they are into it now. Yeah, just a sloppy pass and an easy steal layup. And now, like you just said, Craig, the fans are in this now, and uh, uh, Halconis has their hands full right now. If you're Paco almost for Halconis, what are you saying to your team here to get them calmed down? Well, you're telling them, listen, they picked up their defensive pressure. you got to be stronger with the basketball, make stronger passes, and then we need to be the aggressor again like we started this quarter and get to the basket. But you got to take care of the basketball against this tougher pressure defense. And, uh, you know, they're veterans enough to know that. But, you know, that sloppy pass right there uh, leads to a layup and changes the momentum for Gladiadores. Look at the beautiful pass from Jordan Crawford underneath to Nestor Colmenares. And that last steal by Colmenares. And the finish for Cifontes. Second game of the day earlier on this evening. Franca defeated Udek 109-87. We talked about it repeatedly, Paul. That offense for Franca is terrifying. Udek played about as good as they possibly can. I mean, there were some stretches where Franca was just untouchable, but Udek putting up 87 points. <laughs> and Colmenares pulls the chair out <laughs> from behind yeah, Maho Basic. Yeah. Finally got yeah, called for the travel, and, and, he, yeah, and Maho Basic wants from... the review. He's yeah, I'm telling you, he, please, doesn't, please. He, does, he doesn't want the review because he just fell down. <laughs> he was <laughs> off balance and he fell down. Oh, we'll, we'll get a look at it. Colmenar is, whoop, lets him go by. <laughs> he, he just fell down. Sorry, big fella. And there then Colmenar was absolutely there. right to turn around and say, where's the travel? And then I think the official was so surprised he didn't make a call. And then all of a sudden he's like, oh, yeah, it should blow the whistle here. <laughs> you can't. You can't slide along the floor hold the basket. Yeah, you saw that, Bruin. Sifontes threw an elbow into Giron's chest to get away from him for the inbound pass. Then at the other end, Giron commits the foul. And now Halconis over the limit. Alconis unexpectedly is losing their cool here with the yeah. loud crowd and the physical play and now the defensive pressure, they're losing their cool. They got to get themselves together and calm down. Which is unusual because again, Alconis with so many veterans, a guy like Gabriel Giron playing at the international level for so many years for Mexico, you would think he wouldn't lose his cool like that. Not that he did anything too terrible. It's not like he committed a, a flagrant or a, an unsportsmanlike. Now Giron working into the paint. He slips, fades away, and it circles in and scores. First yeah, time we've really seen anybody. Spot. Yeah, first time yeah, we've really seen anybody down. slip in this second half. We saw it a couple times in the first. Again, it's summer in Venezuela, current temperature. In Puerto La Cruz, 83 degrees with 75% humidity. There for the putback, Anthony Perez, the tip dunk. And nobody blocked him out. They just stood around to let him come from the free throw line for that dunk. That's a basic, you gotta block out. Lead back to six. There you get a look at Daniel Seone. You'll see this. Uh, oh, this other player. Yeah. 
We talked about this the other day too, Frank. Out of control players falling down. Don't believe yeah. they deserve calls like that. That's my opinion. Boy, that top that ball took forever to fall in the cylinder there. <laughs> Soft rims. Did you like soft rims or hard rims? Definitely soft. It gives you the bounce. Like yeah. That. Yeah. Definitely. I remember the old Chicago Stadium had soft rims. Boston Garden, for sure. Yeah. You know what else? L.A. Forum, back when the Lakers were Showtime, they had soft rims, oh. too. Dazzle dazzle by Jordan Crawford. No bucket, though. Yeah, that rim at the old Chicago Stadium made a very distinct sound when a ball hit it. Mm -hmm. I could probably pick it out. If you lined up 100 rims, I could probably pick out the old stadium rim when a ball hit it. <laughs> it's just so distinct. And I heard it enough, that's for sure. Crawford now to Colmenares. Low on the right side, guarded by Devon Jefferson. Spins past Jefferson. Oh, and that's a tough call on Devon Jefferson. Colmenares, under the bucket, hits the backboard with the shot on the way up, and Devon Jefferson called for the foul. Let's see if we can, I'm sure we'll see a better look at it here. Yeah, that's a oh, that's call a too. tough call. That's a tough yeah, call. If you fall, you get a call. That's what I used to say. <laughs> I mean, that that was straight up defense. I don't know if you can defend any better than that. Yeah, you really can't. I mean, Coleman Harris was so far under the bucket. He was in jail. Ball, don't lie. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Second free throw through for Comenares. And here comes Fabian James giving it up to Jordan Glenn. Oh, pretty drive by your guy, Alexis Elsener, and the right-hand finish. He's got seven. And a a right-hand finish with a from a left-hander. Really nice drive. He's very effective getting to the glass. Pass intercepted by Giron. Up ahead to Elsener. He couldn't do anything with it. Gets it back outside for three. No. Rebounded by Vargas. And that's going to be a charge. Oh! oh! That's another bad call. I mean, he was standing there forever. I think the oh referee decided that goodness. before the call. Watch this. He was set before he got into our picture. That's a homer call right there. That's... Uh... It's too bad because he was there forever. If you took, if you wanted to take a clip of how to take a charge, that was it right there. <laughs> that would definitely be on the reel. And now, Giron continuing to talk with the official. So is Paco Olmos and the fans. And the bench. Yeah. The fans wanting a I mean, technical on somebody. You know. I mean, that was so obvious there. I mean, it's too bad. But as everybody says, next play. Just go on, yeah. get the next play. But it's uh, sometimes it's uh, uh, difficult to do, especially in an emotional game with a big crowd like this. And no free throws missed. And... Oh, 
a veteran crew too. Andres Bartel of Uruguay, Carlos Velez of Colombia, and Fernando Laite of Brazil. I didn't see who made that call, but certainly Bartel, a veteran high-level official as Tadar Fernandez hits that three-pointer to give him nine. And the lead is back to 10 for Halconis. 35 seconds to play. Shot thrown up by Anthony Perez. No good. Offensive rebound. Hey, he pulled the chair. Yep. <laughs> Left hand finish. No, but there for the putback, Devon Jefferson. And here comes Halconis strong back. Biggest lead of the game now all of a sudden for Halconis at 12. Gladiadores holding for the final shot. <laughs> and an offensive oh. foul. That one that one made with some flair. They, they, both these guys have a one-on-one -on -one battle going when the game is at hand. <laughs> Over dribbling, uh, you know, taking these bad shots. So. You know, let's relax and play as a team. I I don't, unless they said he used his off arm, I didn't really see an offensive foul there either. Maho Basic from nearly, I beg your pardon, that was Alexis Elsiner. That's my guy. From just That's my guy. half court. Your guy <laughs> buries the three-pointer to give Halconis a 15-point lead heading into the fourth. He just has a presence about him, Craig. He just, he's a really good player. He's very talented. He plays really, really hard. And he has that presence, that something about him that uh, I know one thing I would love to play with him when I was younger. 71 56 heading into the fourth quarter. We are back live from Gimnasio Luis Ramos in Puerto La Cruz, Venezuela, with fourth quarter action in just a couple of moments. Seventy-one fifty-six in favor of Halconis heading into the fourth biggest lead of the game. A little spurt there at the end for Halconis. They outscored Gladiadores in that third quarter, 29-15. Alongside Paul Mokeski, I'm Craig Feda. Welcome in wherever you're watching from. In the USA on FanDuel TV around South America on DirecTV and in the rest of the world, the BCL America's YouTube channel. It'll be interesting to see that the first three or four minutes of this quarter are so important for both teams. If uh, Halconis can absorb a, a, a run and if Gladiadores can make a run. So goaltend on the first shot. The bank is open for three. Anthony <laughs> Perez hits that one. 
and looks it off like, yeah, I tried to do that. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever intentionally seen a guy bank in a three-point. Garcia pulls the rebound down, and here comes Gladiadores. When they do bank it in, they'll tell you they tried. For Gladiadores, Jonathan Araujo with five points, Jordan Crawford seven, Charles Garcia three, Anthony Perez 15 points, Gregory Vargas with 13, Nestor Colmenares with 12. Leading rebounder for Gladiadores, Anthony Perez with five, Gregory Vargas has four assists. Also, Johannes Safontes with four points. Elsener wanted the foul call there, no whistle. And here comes Gladiadores. Jordan Crawford for three. That's good! He shakes his head like, finally, I'm in a shot. <laughs> Lead down to shot, 11. Though. And the battle between Fouls. those two guards keeps, continues on. Yeah. Unnecessary foul. On foul. Gregory Vargas. Jordan Crawford now 10 points. It's two of eight from the arc. Vargas has a seat. He's got three fouls. William Walker also with three for Gladiadores. Anthony Perez with three. Three-pointer is up and good. That time it's Rasid Mahobasic. Big fella knocking down a three saying, I can shoot too. Yeah, Charles Garcia also with three fouls for Gladiadores. Daniel Bejarano, three fouls for Halcones. Gabriel Giron with four. That's stolen away. Halcones a three on one. And Elsener slowed up to let the defender make sure that he committed the foul <laughs> and then went down hard. And lays down there to catch his breath a little bit. See Jordan Crawford. Having a word with the officials there. He's saying, what did I do? I tried to turn away. They have a little and bit I of hit a him point with my there. Body. Yeah, but he yeah. hit him with his body. Like a body block. <laughs> if there's ever a not making a play on the ball, that's it. And Paul, is it all frustrating, is it at all frustrating, I should say, for Americans coming into tournaments like this or, you know, playing for pro clubs overseas, not necessarily in, you know, Italian Serie A or the Israeli Super League or the Turkish Super League, you know, the very best leagues out there, but is it at all difficult for them when they don't, come into a game and absolutely dominate, especially a guy who's been around the NBA. You know, Jordan Crawford, at 35 years old, you know, may not expect to come into this game and put up 40. But certainly a guy who's yeah. had as much NBA mileage on him might have the expectation that he's going to come in and just light it up, and it almost never happens. No, and that's a false expectation because these are high-level players, and, you know, it's a high-level game. And you need to, to be successful to play in these leagues, you have to be a team player or your team's not going to win. You can score 40 and your team's going to lose. So the better players can turn it on and score 30, but they're going to play it as a team and get their team involved. And those are the best and the most successful players that come over in these type of leagues. And we've certainly seen some very good Americans And they're the ones that do it like that. And those are the ones that have long careers and stay in places and 
uh, you know, or regions. And, uh, you know, teams like to have them. They're successful there. And you can make a lot, a lot of money if you do that. Guys like Michael Smith, Eric Anderson, Terrell Holloway playing in this tournament as Elsinger scores again and the lead is 17. Alcone is starting to run away with this one and a timeout by Daniel Sione. And they're doing it on the defensive ends, deflections and steals and then they're leaking out and getting layups or fouls and you know they're doing it defensively, doing a great job defensively. And here you see, okay. Craig, we, talk, we talked about this, right, the other day. Look at their huddle right now. Some players are disengaged. Some players are talking to coaches. You can tell. There's an unhappy player right there. That's Gregory Vargas. He'll be 38 years old next month. And again, some of the top Americans in this tournament, one of the guys that we didn't mention, or I didn't mention, I should say, I'm sure you'd have spit his name right out, Jordan Williams from Hebraica Maccabi. Absolutely. Who's a phenomenal player. I mean, he's, he's one of the best players in this tournament. And a lot of times, Craig, it's the players that can do multiple things. You got to be more than just a shooter. You got to be able to put it on the floor and drive. You got to be more than a rebounder. You got to be able to score and pass in the post. You have to do multiple things at this level, not only for yourself, but for your team. Seventy-nine, sixty-two. following the timeout. Let's see if Daniel Sione's words have any effect on Gladiadores. Vargas on the wing across the court. Now into the corner. Touch pass out to Vargas. Launches the three. Back iron, no. Rebound tapped back and controlled. High off the glass, no. <laughs> My guy, Alex, with the, the rebound. Yeah, but you saw the, the body language by Johannes Sifontes after that miss. And, I mean, it was a gorgeous shot. It was like Kind of Scotty Pippen-esque, high off that glass from the wing as a forward. But it missed, and then you saw his shoulders slump and a foul. I thought I heard a whistle there. Yeah, me too. Wow, whirling dervish, Anthony Perez in the lane. And my guy hit in the face too. What a great finish there. Tough finish. Five and a half minutes to play in the fourth quarter. Gladiadores down 15. Now foul on Vargas. And that's going to be foul number four on the veteran. What a great little flip shot there. Yeah. And if you will battle in the paint like that, some of those little guys are going to have to hat a hole and grab you like that, and you get another possession. Daniel Bejarano wow. takes advantage of that. That's another sign of good teams, Craig. Teams that can execute baseline out of bounds and side out of bounds just like that and get a, get a cheap layup. Biggest lead of the game matched now for Halconis at 17 points. Shot clock winding down into the corner, and Jordan Crawford can't handle it. So a turnover for Gladiadores, and they cannot afford very many of those down the stretch if they are going to get back in this one. No, you can't have empty possessions with no shot taken, and uh, that was a bad turnover right there. It uh, could cost them. Will cost. Bejarano now. Bejarano now with 11 points for Halcones. And this time, I'm going to say it was kicked by Halcones, but that stops the fast break. Yeah, he kicked Gladiador. it. Up, right? 
Well, Craig, there's a uh, there's a uh, a good example of a, a a nice seven foot player that's a good low post player. He's at the top of the key and he tries to do something he shouldn't try to do. He tried to dribble with defensive pressure and turn the ball over. Just pass it, hand it off, and get back down in the post. And Nestor Colmenares wincing, but staying in the game. Didn't see exactly what happened. Now Perez has his shot swatted out of bounds by Jefferson, but a foul before the shot and block. And if you're How about our camera person? work under the basket? <laughs> Be careful. Remember we saw someone get, get taken yeah. out. Yeah. Uh, Broke uh, the leg of the chair and everything. This is the time where you know, Halconis would have been better off just letting him make that and let the clock still tick because right now Halconis is playing against the clock, not the score. Eighty-one sixty-six now in favor of Halconis. Nearly stolen away, and Fibion James comes out of there holding his melon. Launches the three, missed wide right. Maybe he's got double vision after that, missing that badly. <laughs> yeah, that was not a good shot. Maybe he Vargas should pass circles it and just take a shot. <laughs> Pass by Nelson Palacios gets deflected, then the shot, and now bodies all over the place. Guys definitely starting to get fatigued. Legs starting to go out from under him a little bit. It's, it's a warm night. Great defense there by Devon Jefferson. Fast hands, and then Colmenares ends up on the floor again. It's going to be Gladiadores' ball. 3.59 to play, and... Whoa. What was that? Slippery. He slipped coming out of the game. And first of all, I don't know why you would take him out of the game, but secondly, uh, Halconis might look at to play a little zone here and slow them down a little bit and, uh, you know, uh, be a little conservative, but uh, we'll see what happens. Elsener might just need a little bit of a blow here for the final couple of minutes. They're having trouble cleaning that floor like we've seen before, yeah. Craig. It, it's hard to get it dry once it starts sweating and it's humid like that. And what you don't want to see is some player slipping and really injuring himself on a wet mm -hmm. spot. Again, summer in the Southern Hemisphere. Current temperature in... Puerto La Cruz, Venezuela, 83 degrees with 75% humidity at 9 o'clock at night. Oh, yeah. Man. <laughs> Looked like you were stepping onto a roller rink there. Yeah, that's not good. That's uh, that's dangerous. And, and the problem is, too, is if you have these mops that are completely saturated. Yep. That's not helping much either. Right no, you, you know, the old times is you need feet there. On the, have the players use their feet and uh, squeak it out there. Catch and shoot three off the inbound, off the top of the backboard. No good. Rebound Devon Jefferson. Yeah, that's what they do in some of the smaller leagues where they don't have a mop guy or a towel guy. <laughs> players do yeah. it themselves, like just like rec league. Open hey, just, gym. We, we need some we need some feet here. Devon Jefferson, tough work in the paint. Goes up with the right hand. Just a strong move. He's yeah, like we talked before, Craig. He's he's been around. He's seen a lot. And he's just a strong post player. Post player. back to 17 Jefferson with eight points on four of four shooting he's also got seven rebounds 
So a quiet but effective night for Devon Jefferson. Just playing his role, rebounding, scoring in the post, being a physical presence, doing his job. Inside three minutes to play now, and Vargas hits that one. Lead is 14. And I've been here Vargas before, now. Craig. As a coach with the lead, you just keep looking at that clock. Come on, run, man. <laughs> Because There's a line from that, like old, uh, that old Van Halen video, Hot for Teacher. I think the clock is slow. Oh, what a beautiful uh, ball uh, field there by Barrano. He, he was in the circle. It looked like close. But it doesn't matter. Three players in doubles for Gladiadores. Nestor Colmenares, 12 points, four boards. Jordan Crawford, actually four players in doubles now. Jordan Crawford, 10 points on four of 13 shooting. He's also got seven rebounds, three assists. Anthony Perez with 19 points, five rebounds. Gregory Vargas, 16 points, four boards, five assists. Gabriel Giron and Jordan Glynn, each with 15 for Halconis. Your guy, Alexis Elsener, has 13. And Daniel Bejarano with 11. Sportsman, I'm about to find out. That's that's not smart move for when you have a lead like this, and there's still two minutes and thirty seconds left. Crazier things have happened for sure. So it was a technical on the bench of Halcones. Crawford that's makes the free worse. throw. Yeah. That's even worse when your bench gets a technical uncalled for. And stop the clock, give him a free throw, and uh, now it's a 13-point lead. Bejarano fouls out now with 11 points. They get a three here, and we got a game. Take two. Jordan Crawford. He's got 13 now. Ooh. Oh, and Nestor Colmenares goes down hard on the wet spot there. And the official calls timeout. Unfortunate for uh, Halconis because the clock was running. And now they stopped the clock. And yep. uh, uh, Gladiators have a chance to set up their defense. But that was a dangerous slip right there. Yeah, it really was. Whoa. It's the opposite of catching an edge on skis or on skates. Feet went right out from under it. So the lead's 11. Two minutes left is a long time, right? Yeah. I was going to state the obvious, especially when the clock is stopped, but then I thought better of it. <laughs> <laughs> Elsener back into the game. The drive and the right hand finish. Yeah, I don't know if you saw that, Craig, but he said a back pick and then popped and got that ball and it took it right to the hole. So the lead back to 13, minute 45 to play. That 18 footer is up and good. Back to 11.
90 seconds to play in the fourth quarter. Oh, and a beautiful job by Rasid Malbasic. He could do the too small sign if he captured that move. <laughs> Very patient. He's got seven points now. He's like a classic old school big low post player. And then he gets the old man flat footed rebound like I used to do when I played pickup. <laughs> Rowan, and I think Gladiadores realized they are out of steam, and I think Giron just got teed up. I believe that was the fifth foul of the game anyway on Giron. It was. They just teed, they just teed up a, a Halcon player. This is silly. Gabriel Giron, oh, and he's waving the finger on his way off. He may get teed up again. Yeah, you, you don't need to do that now. You got the game. Relax. Just win the game. Yeah, don't, don't give him five free throws here. <laughs> right. I think he was talking to one of the other players on the other team or something. Well, I think Which he was initially goal upset goal about the lack of a foul call. Let's see if we Which can see that sequence just, there. Yeah, he just made a layup to pretty much ice the game. Yeah. Got his team back up 15 with less than a minute to play. He's still and looking then carped, the and then carped about the the lack of a call. So here we go. Makes the bucket, complains about no call on Vargas, gets teed up. And give up two free throws in the ball. And Maho Basic talking with the official as well and he comes over and slaps Giron's <laughs> hand Giron appreciated the the continued <laughs> assault on the official's ears so when Vargas misses like the tee just want to end the game <laughs> yeah 89 74 Vargas trying to find some space around David Kubian, his national team teammate. Both players fall to the floor. Jordan Crawford, no call. I think the referees have had enough. They're just going to let this run. Yeah. Out. No matter what happens, unless you punch somebody. Yeah, I was going to say, let's hope nobody gets, you know, too frustrated here. Shot clock at five. Lob into Maho Bas, and she gets called, rather fouled from behind by Nelson Palacios. <laughs> this is straight out push. Here you go. Take this with you. <laughs> See one of those thunder sticks <laughs> blocking our camera there. Six seconds difference between the shot clock and the game clock. David Cubalon with the dagger. <laughs> wow. That's his Venezuelan teammates. Point. Yeah, in the face of his Venezuelan teammates. My goodness. Final score 92 74. And an impressive run down the stretch. In the second half by Halcones, outscoring Gladiadores 29-15 in that third quarter. And then 21-18 in the fourth. To take the 92-74 win.
There you get a look at the shooting numbers on this one. Gladiadores, 46 points overall, 7 of 25 from three-point range, 9 of 18 from the free throw line. Look at that, 13 steals for Halcones, just three for Gladiadores. Halcones, 34 of 66 from the floor. An impressive performance as a team. Nearly 55%. Look at the Group A standings. All three teams with six points. Each team two and two. Wow, that's where uh, point differential starts coming in, right? Yep, it sure does. It's important. Let's look at the individual tallies on this one. Nestor Colmenares, 12 points, four rebounds. For Gladiadores, Jordan Crawford. The NBA veteran, 15 points, 7 rebounds, 3 assists. Anthony Perez, 19 points, 6 boards. Gregory Vargas, 16 points, 4 rebounds, 5 assists. Jonathan Araujo, 5 points, 4 boards. Charles Garcia, 3 points. Johanna Sifontes had 4. For Halcones, David Kubigan, 10 points. Alexis Elsener, your guy. 15 points, yes. three board. Ginobili Jr. <laughs> Tanner Fernandez, nine points. Jordan Glenn, 15 points. Rasid Mahobasic, seven points, six rebounds. Should mention that Elsener also had three steals and two assists. Daniel Bejarano, 11 I'm, points. I'm gonna, I'm gonna announce right now, I might adopt him and bring him to Las Vegas. I love the way he well, plays the game. We'll, we'll see how Michael and Brian feel about that. If they need a new little brother. <laughs> well, I know they can, he can beat them one on one. I know that. <laughs> Probably nowadays, yeah. Uh, Gabriel Garon, 17 points on 7 11 shooting before fouling out. And then Devon Jefferson, 8 points, 7 boards. Finally, in our earlier game today, Franca defeated Udek 109-87. Our next game will take place Friday, the 26th, between Nacional and Kimsa. As we start to roll the highlights. That one will be at 7.10 local time as well as in the U.S. Eastern time. That one will be at Estadio Obras Sanitarias in Buenos Aires. Been to that venue as well. Great place. Look forward to being there on Friday, virtually, of course. Again, the final score, Halcones defeats Gladiadores by the score of 92-74. For my partner, Paul Mokeski, I'm Craig Fado saying thanks for watching and so long for now.